Do you like drawing cards, gaining life, and smashing your opponent's faces in? So does this guy. The Archimandrite is a 0-5 legendary human advisor that, for 2 blue, red, white, says at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand, minus 4. But whenever you gain life, each advisor, artificer, and monk you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus 0 until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained. And finally, tap 3 untapped advisors, artificers, and or monks you control to draw a card. So what's weird about this guy are the three creature types that really don't have anything to do with each other or any synergy with each other being involved in this pseudo tribal deck together. Since that's the case, we just need to focus on the commander's text and build up from there. Since gaining life is how we'll buff our creatures, that's where we'll start. Faithful Mending will let you gain two life, draw two cards, and then discard two cards. It also has flashback so you can use it again. Revitalize will let you gain three life. Ritual of Rejuvenation will give you four life, and both will let you draw a card. Union of the Third Path lets you draw a card, and then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. And then Heartwarming Redemption will have you discard your hand, then draw that many cards plus one. Then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. All of them are at instant speed, so you can do quite a bit of damage if your creatures are unblocked and you have mana open. Chaplain's Blessing will give you five life at sorcery speed. Sunbeam Spell Bomb is an artifact that you can activate at instant speed to gain 5 life. Font of Vigor is an enchantment that you can activate for 7 life. Sanguine Sacrament is an instant for X and 2 white that will give you twice X life. And then you can put it at the bottom of your library. Soul's Grace is an instant that will give you life equal to the target creature's power. So once Archie activates during your upkeep, or you activate another life ability, you can double that life by gaining life after Archie boosts your creature's power. Tablet of the Guilds is an artifact that will give you life when you cast a spell of one of two colors or both colors. In this deck, you'll choose white and blue since there really isn't much red at all. Student of Ojitai is a monk that will give you two life whenever you cast a non-creature spell. Shabraz the Sky Shark will get a 1-1 counter and let you gain life whenever you draw a card. But with just a few card swaps, this can add up to quite a bit of life encounters to smack your opponents. This is a weird fit for our current setup, but honestly our options are really thin here. Then there's Delusions of Mediocrity, a 4 cost enchantment that will give you 10 life but you'll lose 10 life once it leaves the battlefield. Our removal package for artifacts and enchantments is actually pretty fun. Divine Offering will destroy an artifact and give you life equal to its mana value. Sanctify will destroy an artifact or enchantment and give you 3 life. Solemn Offering will do the same but it'll give you 4 life for 1 more mana. And Serene Offering will destroy an enchantment and give you life equal to its mana value. Runic Shot will destroy a tapped creature at sorcery speed, while Swift Response will do it at instant speed. Smite will destroy a blocked creature. Fateful Absence will destroy a creature or planeswalker, but let its controller investigate as compensation. And Afterlife will destroy a creature, preventing regeneration and giving them a 1-1 flying spirit instead. While counters aren't exactly removal, we have quite a bit of counter magic to prevent our fragile game plan from being disrupted. Counter Spell, Dawn Charm, Disruption Protocol, Flash Counter, Memory Lapse, and Negate will all counter certain spells in certain circumstances. Hindering Light will counter a spell that targets you or a permanent you control while letting you draw a card as well. Keep Safe does the same thing but only for your permanents. Overrule will counter a spell unless its controller pays X and you'll gain X life. Since Archie's ability also lets us gain life at our upkeep depending on the number of cards in our hand, we have some cards to help us with that part of it. This part of our strategy will be better if we decide to swap some of our cards for better and less budget card draw. But for now, Spellbook, Wizard Class, Thought Vessel, and Decanter of Endless Water will all give you no maximum hand size. To help fill your hand, Folio of Fancies will give you X cards if you pay twice X and tap it, while Body of Knowledge's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand and when it's dealt damage, you draw that many cards, making it a fantastic blocker. Sturmgeist has power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand, but it's a flyer that'll get through and will draw you a card when it deals damage to a player. And speaking of damage, most of our creatures are simple beaters with no useful abilities in Commander, or at least this deck. Monastery Swift Spear has haste and prowess. Jeskai Sage has prowess and will draw you a card when it dies. Serene Master will swap its power with an attacking creature's power if it blocks, so 
it won't die for the most part. It's almost like prevent damage in a way. It's kind of weird. Mantis Rider has flying, vigilance, and haste. Mistfire Adept has prowess and will give a target creature flying when you cast a non-creature spell. Ojitai Exemplars will let you tap a creature, let it gain first strike and lifelink until end of turn, or you can exile it and return it to the battlefield whenever you cast a non-creature spell. The second ability is really good here, since first strike will let you gain the life and boost your other creature's power before they deal damage themselves. It works kind of like, I forget which one it is, but the Drana that attacks and gives counters to your attacking creatures. It works like that. Dragon Style Twins has Double Strike and Prowess. Githzerai Monk has Flash, Flying, and when it enters the battlefield, tap all creatures you don't control, which can be pretty devastating if you have the creatures and you can gain a lot of life and you have Counterspell ready just in case your opponents have a response. Myth Realized is an enchantment that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on it. You can also pay two and a white to put a lore counter on it, and then you can pay one white, and it will become a monk avatar creature with power and toughness equal to the lore counters on it. Elusive Spellfist, oddly enough, might be the best creature because it gets plus one plus zero and becomes unblockable when you cast a non-creature spell, which honestly is kind of sad. Jeskai Elder has prowess and when it deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card and discard a card. Shu Yun the Silent Tempest has prowess and whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you can pay two red white hybrid mana to give a creature double strike until end of turn. Narset Enlightened Master has first strike and hexproof. Whenever she attacks, you exile the top four cards of your library and until the end of the turn, you can cast non-creature cards this turn without paying their mana costs. Now this is kind of risky, but depending on your luck, you might end up with some pretty buff creatures. I'm definitely not a fan of this card in this deck, but a first strike monk with hexproof really isn't a bad beater here. Avon Courier is an advisor with flying and whenever it attacks, you choose a counter on a permanent you control. Put a counter of that kind on a target permanent you control if it doesn't have a counter of that kind on it. Stratus Dancer is a flying monk with Mega Morph. When it's turned face up, you can counter an instant or sorcery spell. Celestial Regulator is a flying advisor that says when it enters the battlefield, tap a creature you don't control. If you control a creature with a counter on it, the tapped creature doesn't untap during the next untap step. And now all that's left are the miscellaneous cards in our deck. Orzov Advocist is an advisor that will let a player put two 1 1 counters on a creature they control. If they do, creatures that player controls can't attack you or a planeswalker you control until your next turn. Psychosis Crawler has power and toughness equal to the cards in your hand and will have each opponent lose a life when you draw a card. Now this will be more effective if you lean more into the card draw side of things. I only have two ramp pieces with the Boros and Izzet Signets, but I mean ideally you'd swap out whatever you don't like in this deck, which is kind of a lot, and then make it slightly better in its worst places. So you can kind of do whatever you want to do here. And finally, we have the best card in the deck. And while none of the cards in this deck are particularly great, this one stands out as better than them, which is, you know, is kind of a low bar. Regardless, if I had to give an award to the best card in the deck, it would probably be some kind of golden coconut or something. I, you know, I don't know. It would definitely be 100% original though. But Ivory Tower is an artifact that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life where X is the number of cards in your hand minus four. If that sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what our commander says. And we'll double that upkeep trigger for our creatures if we have a decent amount of cards in our hand. And that's about it for this sad deck. Once we dump that into the TCG player cart, we end up with a subtotal of about $40.86 but make sure you double check your cart and the cards that are in it. The system tried to sell me the Orzov Advocist for 99 cents and then charged me $5 in shipping. So I swapped the sellers and got rid of that ridiculous shipping charge to get this total. So always look at your cart. Regardless, this deck is really bad right now and more of a jank deck just waiting for the right support. Archie's effect is strong and really interesting, but unfortunately the creature types they chose to include with it don't really have anything to do with each other or the idea of the deck, especially artificers. I mean, they're all about artifacts and won't really benefit from the effect if you put them in the deck without artifacts to support it. Anyway, it's wonky and weird and worth a try if you're desperate for some jank wins at your next commander night.
Let me know what you think of the Archimandrite and our life gain focus deck in the comments below. I really doubt anyone will really make this deck, but if you do, let me know how it goes. Like the video if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it, and until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome.